Our last section on the respiratory system has to do with respiratory health, some diseases and disorders. Some respiratory illnesses make breathing very difficult and can even become life-threatening and cause death. The best way to maintain good respiratory health is to stay away from irritants and air pollution. And of course, as we know with colds and all of that, wash your hands and cough into your sleeve, your shoulder, not into your hands that you can spread all over the place. Now this chart from your book, the only thing that I don't like about this chart is the last two where it talks about emphysema and lung cancer and it has as causes smoking. Well, smoking is not the only. Yes, people who smoke, very high chances of emphysema, very high chances of lung cancer. But I don't want you to think that everybody that has emphysema or everybody that has lung cancer, it's because they smoked. Because there are some other causes other than just smoking, although that's the predominant cause. So I want to point that out about the chart. And we're going to talk about each of these in alphabetical order, though. Asthma. I'm sure some of you have asthma. It's a disorder characterized by difficulty in breathing, and here's the key part that you need to know for the quiz and test, is the bronchioles become constricted. Now, when they become constricted, that means they're getting smaller. And it's usually caused by mold spores or some other substance that's in the air that is causing this reaction. So look at the picture up there. Look at the air tube on the right, how open it is. Think about how much air can get through. And then look at the inflamed one because of an asthma attack, because something that you're allergic to, mold spores, other airborne substances, is causing a reaction and the constriction of the bronchioles, which are the smallest air tubes that make up your lung tissue. It's main, one of the main things making up your lung tissue. And look at the difference in size. And of course, you're going to have shortness of breath, not going to get enough breath, uh, and it become, can become very serious and cause death. But that's why they have it in inhalers and other things that you can take that will open up that constricted pathway. Bronchitis, which I had twice now this school year, and I'm sure some of you have had bronchitis this year. It's an inflammation. Now, whenever we say inflammation, I want you to know what I'm talking about. Inflammation means that there's an infection in there. And just like if you have an infection on your skin, and it gets red, and it gets swollen, and it hurts, well, that's what's going on inside of you. And in here, if it's bronchitis, bronchus, your bronchi, are the tubes, remember, that go from the trachea to each lung. And that is what has become infected. And usually, it is from bacteria or viruses. Now, a collapsed lung is when, and here's the key part that you need to know for a quiz, it's when the alveoli are not inflated. And those are little tiny microscopic air sacs that we talked about. And so that causes then your lung to collapse. And you can see the difference in size there. And obviously, that lung's not getting in the air. So you're having about half the amount of air getting into your system than you had before it was collapsed. So a condition in which the alveoli of the lungs are not inflated may be caused by incomplete expansion of the lungs. Uh, in premature babies, they see the last thing that develops a, as you are inside your mom developing is your lungs. And so when you're a preemie and you're born premature, then sometimes it's the lungs haven't fully developed yet. And that could be cause a collapsed lung. And then, of course, if you get some kind of puncture, whether it be you get stabbed or you get a stick or you get... Um, a bullet that goes into your lung that would cause it to collapse as well. The common cold, which we've seen a lot of this year. And remember we talked about those mucus, ciliated mucus membranes in your nose and your throat, the throat, your trachea. Well, when it becomes infected, that is 
a common cold. And if it's not taken care of properly, then it may lead to bronchitis. And if that's not taken care of, then that may lead to pneumonia. Emphysema. Now remember, it is a high risk if you're a smoker, but it's the only cause is not just smoking. What happens, it's a de degenerative condition in which your lungs overexpand. Now, it's like, think of elastic, and you keep pulling on it, keep pulling on it. Eventually, that elastic is going to lose its elasticity, and it's not going to be able to stretch and then go back to its original position. And that's what happens to the walls of these little tiny microscopic air sacs, the alveoli. They lose their elasticity. That's the key part to know for quiz and test. The alveoli lose their elasticity. And that can, it's just like if you blow up a balloon too much, it can burst. Well, these can rupture as well. And if they do, then fluids can fill up into the lungs and cause, uh, of course, death. Emphysema can cause death uh, if it's not treated and not caught and you don't take care of what's been causing it. Hay fever. Now, hay fever is commonly referred to as allergies because it is an allergy. But the key is it's an allergy not of food or not of, like I'm uh, severely allergic to cats or cat dander. See, that's not hay fever. But I'm also allergic to some pollen of trees and plants. That's when they refer to it as hay fever. So it is an allergy, but it's allergies to pollen of plants. And one of the most common pollen that a lot of people are allergic to is ragweed. So it's a disorder characterized by sneezing, running nose, itching of the eyes, nose, and throat. And it's allergic reaction to the pollen. Hiccuping. Hiccuping. It's a disorder that seems to be caused by irregular contractions of the diaphragm. And not only is your diaphragm just spazzing, but your glottis is closed when it's spazzing. And that is what makes the sound. And there's no really useful function, obviously, for a hiccup. And they don't know what really causes the diaphragm to start those irre irregular contractions. There's lots of remedies. You probably know of some that you use. Lung cancer. C cancer of any sort is when cells start growing and they're growing so rapidly and out of control and they don't function. Instead, they're making a blockage for the good cells and in the organ so that it cannot function properly. So it's a disease with a variety of symptoms. Breathing is difficult because abnormal growths of tissue block the air passages. And so that's the key part about lung cancer, just no abnormal growths of tissue. And it's common in people who smoke, very common, high, high risk of lung cancer for smokers. Pleurisy. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about in your respiratory system is, remember we talked about your bones and you had the periosteum, which was a covering, a thin covering over the bones? Well, you have a thin sac around your heart, which we'll talk about when we get to the heart, but you have thin membranes also around each lung. And that membrane is called the pleural membrane. And when it gets inflamed, in other words, there's an infection, bacteria, viruses, causing an infection, that's pleurisy. And it's very painful to breathe because just think about, you know, when you have an infected area on your skin and you touch that area, how it's warm and hot and also it's painful. Well, think about you breathing and that membrane being touched. It uh, usually occurs as a complication of pneumonia, so if you don't take care of pneumonia, it can lead to pleurisy. And then it's also a complication of tuberculosis, which we're going to be talking about. Pneumonia, which I had this year as well. 
a disease in which the lungs are inflamed because of a bacterial or viral infection. So when that infection goes like a cold and it moves from your mouth and your throat, then it goes down into your bronchi, which is bronchitis. And then if it's still, you don't get rid of it, it can go into your bronchioles and into your lung tissue. And that's pneumonia. Symptoms are usually fever, pain, and a severe cough. And then TB is the last that we're gonna talk about, and that's tuberculosis, commonly referred to as capital T and a capital B. It's a very infectious disease. And it can affect any part of the body, but the most common type of tuberculosis attacks the lungs. And it forms these bumps on the lungs. So you have these bumps, and you also have these lesions, which are openings. And if you look up that picture up there, you can see a, a tubercular lesion. And that's kind of the holes. And you can see the holes that are, are forming there caused by bacterium or viral infection, and the symptoms are usually fever, pain, and a severe cough. Here's a picture, a diagram, showing you the progression. So you can get one of those little bumps, those tubercles, like you can see on the far left, that white one. And then it will continue to do its damage, and then it causes lesions, and then it spreads, and in the last picture, you can see several lesions, which are the holes, and then all those white spots, which are more tubercles, those bumps.